my name is John, son of Zebedee. When my brother James and I first became apostles, Jesus called us the sons of thunder, because we were easily angered and full of bluster. I remember early in our ministry we found some strangers driving out demons in the name of Jesus. We were indignant. Master, we saw a man driving out demons in your name and we tried to stop him, because he is not one of us. But Jesus, in his usually calm manner, just reminded us that whoever is not against you is for you. Oh. Yeah. Of course. A little while later, when we were about to go through a village on our way to Jerusalem, the town leaders sent word that we were not welcome there. Of course, James and I were enraged. We shouted, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? How dare they reject the one true Messiah of God? But, again, Jesus calmly reminded us that the Messiah is the Savior, not the Destroyer. Oh. Yeah. Of course. So now you see how we became known as the Sons of Thunder. It's hard to imagine that after all these years I'm now known as the Apostle of Love. I suppose this only goes to show you that love is a behavior you can learn, and not an emotion that you feel. As I see it, love stands on two legs. If you remove either leg, love will not stand. The first leg is trust. I learned that, if there is no trust in a relationship there is no love. Only, I learned about this in a robot on the Sea of Galilee. We had left Jesus behind on the shore, to mourn the loss of his cousin, John the Baptist. He sent us on ahead, so we began to row across the lake. When the storm came up suddenly. During the storm Jesus caught up to us. But instead of rowing a boat, Jesus was walking on the water. Well, as you might suspect, we were all terrified, both by the storm, and by this person walking on top of the waves. Some of us thought that this was a ghost. But Jesus calmed our fears the moment he spoke. Now, I suppose you're going to ask, what does storms and rowboats have to do with love? Well, of all people, it was a loud mob named Peter who taught me about love that day. When Peter confirmed that it was Jesus out there walking on water, he asked Jesus if he could do it too. Jesus agreed, and Peter stepped out of the boat and began to walk on water. Mind you, when most people remember this story, they remember how Peter began to sink when he let the size of the waves intimidate him. But I remember that Peter was the only apostle in the boat to trust Jesus. Trust is one of the legs that love stands on and Peter was strong in trust. He was an example for all of us. The other leg that love stands on is sacrifice. Only, my role model for sacrifice was a tax collector. His name was Matthew. Now, I don't know how much you know about tax collectors, but I can tell you from personal experience that tax collectors in Israel were very wealthy. When Matthew decided to follow Jesus, he gave up a huge fortune. And what Matthew taught me was that the more of this world you let go of, the tighter your grip on Jesus. No one loved Jesus more than Matthew because no one sacrificed more for Jesus. So, there you have it, a lesson on love from the Apostle of Love. And now you know the truth. I got my reputation for love from merely copying the behavior of two other people. But that was, before I found an even better example of love in the person of Jesus himself. He was the ultimate example of love standing on a foundation of trust and sacrifice. No human being has ever trusted the Father more, and no one ever sacrificed more than Jesus himself. Based on a play by Bob Snook. Conditions for use, do not sell any part of this script, even if you rewrite it. Pay no royalties, even if you make money from performances. You may reproduce and distribute this script freely, but all copies must contain this copyright statement.